So in a previous video, we did this event listener when we click on the button and it adds one of these new items in this list. Now that's great, but what if we want to be able to remove these items and we did something that we can clear all of them, but what if you want to remove individual ones? So if I want to add a button next to each one of these that if we click on it, it deletes that particular item. So that's what we're going to do in this and that's going to open up a lot of challenges and then we'll also learn about things like event bubbling and things like that. Uh, so let's see how that's going to work. So first of all, let's go back to our HTML and make sure we add a delete button for each item. So we have this label with an input box right here. Let me actually move this to a different line so it stays here and we'll add a button right below this and we'll call it delete. Again, you can just do whatever you want. I'm just going to keep this simple and we'll give this button some sort of class now, I'm not going to give that button an ID and I'll uh, explain why in a second. I'll call it delete button. Now, the reason I'm not giving this button an ID is because I'm planning to build more of these things in this template structure. And IDs can only happen once per structure. So if I assign an ID to one of these elements and I keep adding more of the same button, I will end up with multiple buttons with the same ID, which you should never have. But we could have a class button, the same thing I'm going to repeat in my template, as you can see here. So what this is going to do, if I go back and reload this, we're going to have this delete button. If I click add, uh, I should probably remove that double click event. That's annoying. Get rid of that whole double click thing. And we're going to get rid of the click thing anyways. But for right now, let's just get rid of this. Here we go. So I'm going to reload this. So if I add, see that adds a new one. If I click delete, nothing happens because, well, delete button does nothing. So basically what we want to happen, we want to be able to click on this delete button and delete this element. Now the problem with that is going to be when we're adding an event listener, we add that event listener to something that already exists in our HTML. So I could, for example, go and add an event listener to this button and say, when you click on this button, let's remove this box. The problem with this is that we don't have all these other buttons on a page when we start the page. So there's nothing to assign event listeners to. So I can't just say, let's go and add an event listener to buttons that don't exist. So for that, we're going to have a challenge of assigning some sort of event to these buttons that don't exist. But what's interesting about the way events work is that events bubble. And what that event bubbling means is that we know that these buttons don't exist yet, but what's going to happen because these are all child elements inside of our main box. So in our case, all of these like div entry boxes are child inside of this app box. So when you click on this button, that click travels to parent elements. So you can capture that click on a parent element as well. So when I click on this button, that is also considered a click on this div parent, which is an entry box. And it's also going to travel to this parent here, which is the ID app, which is also going to travel to the body. So it keeps just going like this to the parent element over and over. So even though all those entry boxes don't exist in here at a time we're adding our event listeners, this parent, which is the ID app, is still going to exist, which is going to help us to capture all those events. So what I'm going to do, instead of assigning the event to the button itself, I'm going to assign it to this parent element app to capture all of those clicks. So we'll go back and change our code. So we'll create another function here. This function we're going to call delete box. And for now, that function is not going to do much. We'll just do something like console log. So just to log a message, clicked it, something like this. And then we'll assign that function with an event to that parent box, 
which is this app that's going to contain all those entry boxes. So I'll go ahead and do again, document dot get element by ID. The ID is going to be app and we're going to add an event listener. And we're going to say when you click on that, we're going to run that function called delete box. Pretty much the same way we did before. So let's just save this. Let's go back and check what happens. So I'm going to save this, go back and reload our thing. I'm going to open the console window and go to my developers console so we can see what's going on. So right now, if I click add guest, see, it's going to add a new one. Now that's not going to log anything to the console. When we click on this delete button, see that says clicked it because that traveled from this delete button to the parent and the parent went to the app and that captured the event. But that's also going to capture the event if I click, for example, on this input box, because that's also one of the child elements. So now I click twice. If I go and click on this guest name, see now that's three. We clicked on it three times. So anything we click on in that box is going to be captured by this app. So if I click on this, it's going to be captured. If I click on this, it's going to be captured. If I click on this button, it's going to be captured. If I click on this div, it's going to be captured by this app, including if we click on the div app, if we somehow manage to do that. So that brings us to our event object. So what's going to happen when we click on this delete box? Well, not delete box, but this app. It's going to run this function, delete box, and that function accepts a parameter. Usually people call it E. You can really call it anything you want. It's just a variable. And then I'm going to log instead of the click it, I'm going to log that E to see what's in there. So this object E is always going to come with this click event. So when I save this, go back and reload this. Let me add a few things here. Now, if I click on, let's say this delete, switch to my console lock. See, it gives me an object and that object has the target. See, which is button delete button. Now let's go and click on something else. So what if I click on this thing? If I open the console, see now it's the target input. That's what we clicked on in that particular case. If I click on the guest name, that will be target label. So by looking inside of that event, if I open this, there will be a bunch of things. See, there is the current target and there's all this other stuff. And if we go just target, that's also that button that was clicked on. So by referring to that target, we can figure out what element was clicked on inside of that box. So how do we refer to that target? We go here, we say E dot target. So I'm going to save that, go back and reload and add a couple of things here, click delete. And if we look in our log, see, we clicked on that button delete. If I click on this thing right here, let's say that input box, go to the console. We clicked on input box. Now we can know which element was clicked on. What we can do with this, we can now identify when the button was clicked. So what we have to do is we have to differentiate. Was it a click on the delete button? Was it a click on this input? We're really only interested if somebody clicked on the delete button. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to find, is that a button element with a delete button class? All right, so let's do that. So we're going to go here and add an if statement. We're going to say if that E dot target which will be our element. So if that has in their class list, so we're going to open the class list. And in class list, if you remember, we can add to the class list by doing dot add or remove, but there is also this contains method. So that will check if it contains a particular class. The class we're looking for in this case, is the class we've assigned to our button, which was in here, delete button. That's the class. So I'm going to go back and say, does it contain delete button class, the element that was clicked on? 
And if it does, this is going to give us true, which means it's going to go inside of this if statement. So I'm going to go here and add the brackets. I'm going to move this console right there. So this way now we should be checking if the element that was clicked on has a class delete button, then we want to lock this message. Otherwise we shouldn't be logging any messages out. Now you could also check if the element has the tag button. So you could also just chain another check here and you could say if the target tag name equals to button. This way you're checking if it's a button and it has a class delete button at the same time. But I don't want to do this because I'm just going to keep it organized. If it has a delete button class, then we're going to know I'm not going to add this class to anything else. So that's that delete button class. So this way we're going to know what it is. I'm just going to save this. Let's just make sure this is correct. Hopefully this is contains, not contain. So let's refresh it and go check this. So reload, add a couple of things. So now what should happen if I click on this enter name, we go to our console, there's nothing. If I click on this guest name, it's nothing here. If we click on delete button, it logs it out. If we click on this other delete button, that's logged to our console too. So now that we were able to tell that it was a click on the delete button, we can react to it. We could say, let's, for example, remove that element instead of just logging that thing. Let's just say, let's take the E target. Actually, let's do it after we log it because we want to get rid of it. So we're going to do E target dot remove because it's an element we should be able to remove it from the DOM. So if I do this, let's go back and reload, add a couple of things here. Now, if I click on this delete, see that delete button is gone. If I click on this delete, that delete button is gone. If I click on this one, that delete button is gone. So right now we're deleting the target element and our target element is that button that we clicked on. But that's not actually what we want to happen. We want this whole line to be gone when we click on that button, which means instead of deleting the actual button, that we clicked on, we want to remove this whole div entry box, which is the parent of this button. So we need to be able to travel up to the parent to find what it is. So let's see if we can make that happen. So for now, I'm going to just comment this line to remove it. Let's go to our console log and look inside of the target again to see what's going on there. So I'm going to reload this and add a couple of things. I'm going to hit delete. Let's open our console and see what's happening here. So we have this. Now, if I open this, if I scroll down, see there are all these properties and methods here, but what we're trying to find here is a way for us to get the parent. So see, there's this thing, parent element. There's also parent node. So that should refer to the parent. See, that refers to the parent, this refers to the parent. So I'm going to take the parent element, which would be that entry box. That should work for us. If we do dot parent element, that should refer to the parent. Now you have to be careful with your structure here because if your HTML is in a way that this button is also nested in another div, then the parent of that would be that div. For us, the parent of this button is the div, which is that entry box div. That's the one we actually want to get rid of. So that means if I go to my code and change this e target parent element, and again, it's case sensitive language. So if I reload this, add a few things here. If I click, let's say in here, that should do nothing. See nothing. If I click on delete button, that should do the parent. And if I roll over it, see that parent is that particular parent of that delete button in the third line. Now, if I go and click on this delete, which is the second one from the bottom, if I go back to my console, that should log that element. And if I roll over it, that is the whole parent 
of that delete button. And that is exactly the element we need to remove. And to remove the element, we just have to do dot remove. So we're just gonna go here and we don't need to console lock this really, but we need to just take that and do dot remove. And that should remove it from the DOM. Now keep in mind, if it was a parent of a parent, you could keep doing this like dot parent element again after this and go to the parent of the parent. But for us, it's just one level up. So this is fine for me. I'm just gonna do this, save that. I'm gonna remove this log. We don't want to do that anymore. So if I refresh this, now we can add guests. And if we click delete, that will remove that particular one. Now to see that it's removing the right one, let's actually type some things here. I'm gonna say A, B, C, and D. And if I go and click delete on this B one, see A, C, D are the ones left. If I click on this one, that's the one gone. If I click on this A one, that's the one gone. So now we can actually delete this and we can add them as we deem necessary. And these are more boxes. And we can again, just remove the ones we want, just like that. And this is how we use event bubbling in our advantage. So the way that event travels, it goes, in our case, we have the child element that's clicked on, that goes to the parent, that goes to the parent again. And because these things don't exist at the time of rendering the page, we assign our event listener to the element that exists, which is gonna be this app element that already exists on a page. And then as we keep adding more of these entry boxes by clicking on that add button, we can capture all the clicks on all of these elements by capturing the events on this parent element and then react to it by using our event object and basically navigating through that event and reacting to it. Hopefully that makes sense. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.